Hello and welcome back to the Tucker and Crowley Report. Franklin Tucker, senior editor of the Belmontonian, is with us again, and I'm Mike Crowley. Uh, first, I want, to, I want to remind viewers that opinions and comments on this program do not represent those of the Belmont Media Center, the town of Belmont, or Comcast or Verizon. So Franklin, let's talk about the Belmont News. So first up, the Council on Aging. What's happening there? Well, the Council on Aging is now um, almost officially uh, 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 now part of a new uh, department. It's the Human Services Department. Uh, it is one of four um, uh, former um, uh, independent um, departments in town okay. that are now under uh, a single uh, an umbrella. Mm -hmm. uh, it is um, <clears throat> they don't have a, a, a director yet, but mm -hmm. uh, but it appears that um, the recreation commission's uh, 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 the recreation department's uh, director Brendan Fitz will be taking over that uh, role. Now, now there's been fact, a, I do want to ask whether yeah. there's been any controversy about this um... extended controversy. Okay, so. Um, it's, uh, Put it quickly, um, uh, there was always in the back of the mind of Patrice Garvin, our town administrator, to do um, to basically consolidate and make uh, departments more efficient. You know, mm -hmm. she did it with the human resources. She did it with the um, Department of uh, Public Works, um, and um, she was always in the back of her mind thinking, you know, let's 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 incorporate some of these uh, departments and put them all under one wing. And um, what happened is that um, uh, the uh, director of uh, the Beach Street Center, which is the uh, director of uh, senior services, mm -hmm. um, she uh, uh, she left, and uh, uh, Brendan uh, was asked to be the interim director. At that time, she began to hear a lot of uh, uh, incidents where there's a lot where basically the uh, um, Council on Aging was trying to uh, or was influencing. Uh, you know um, what was going on in um, uh, the uh, the personnel. You know, basically using personnel at the uh, senior sir at the uh, uh, the, at the Street Center. Center uh, you know, for other, you know, the way they wanted to the the, the Beach Street Center to run, not the okay. way the director. Okay. So uh, there was a lot of dysfunctional. Um, um, there was a lot of dysfunction there. Even the uh, Council on Aging admits there was. So what happened is that. Um, Patrice said, you know, not a bad time to uh, to change what's going on there, you know, incorporate uh, the, the Council on Aging along with uh, some other um, departments like uh, Veteran Services and uh, things like that. And uh, so what, and the rec department would, would now go into this uh, uh, department. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so she said in May to, uh, to the Council on Aging, you know, uh, let's do this, let's do it over a year's time. But then it just accelerated. Um, the, the 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 transformation accelerated in June. Um, there were a number. Of Is that because we lost a director of the Beach Street Center, got an interim, and and that, you know, it was it was also that important uh, uh, positions were uh, uh, opening up at, okay. the, at the at the Beach Street Center. So uh, what Patrice said is, let's do it now. Let's let's hire these. Let's 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 bring let's put um, uh, new job uh, titles. For these people, new responsibilities, and um, you know, we're not going to uh, have a director of uh, the Beach Street Center. We're going, what we're going to have instead is a program director for for senior services. So and, I want to ask you, Franklin. I mean, is is part of the rationale for this uh, uh, reformulation of departments uh, is is part of the rationale to operate with fewer personnel? Um, they, uh, what I heard is that uh, Patrice said in, in an interview with me, she said, no, the headcount's going to stay the same, the budget's going to okay. stay the same. It's just that who is going to report to whom? Okay. Uh, it's not no longer going to be the director of, of senior services uh, coming directly to, um, uh, or, you know, coming directly to uh, uh, the town administrator. It's now going to be uh, more of a, a chain of command where the program director of senior services will now talk to the assistant director of this new department, and then that person will talk to Brendan Fitz. Now, so, so I, I do want to ask you, though, Franklin, now, a number of, of seniors in town, um, and, and I can't speak to how many, of course, but based on social media and... and social media, especially. And and what's been communicated to the town by, by some seniors is, is a feeling 
that they're being disrespected or 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 not being thought of appropriately in this latest uh, uh, set of um, of changes. And I think I think they have uh, a uh, they do have uh, some uh, legitimate complaints, such as uh, they were told it was going to take a year before uh -huh. this entire uh, process to take place. It took place in basically three or four months. Okay. Um, also, um, you know, they, they feel that uh, the senior services now, as part of a, of a, of a, uh, of a bigger uh, department and, um, and, uh, and their program director now doesn't directly talk to, you know, the people, uh, you know, the, the board of selectmen or, or the, uh, or the town ministry, they go through, you know, uh, the, the department. Okay. okay. So they feel that they've lost a uh, important voice. They feel that they're being, Pushed to the side, and and, and uh, you know, um, Patrice uh, Garvin, the town administrator, did uh, do this very quickly. She she did uh, attend meetings of the, of the COA and try to explain herself, uh, but uh, there was just a lot of uh, mistrust, I would say. Now, now the the director of the new department um, is this Brandon Fitz? Yeah, uh, well, that hasn't been the the job. It's not been announced. It hasn't been announced, but okay. every but. We all know it's going to be Brandon Fitz. Okay. So, um, and uh, but right now the only job that's still out there, which is in senior services, is going to be the, is still the program director. So what happened is that uh, the the uh, COA, the Council of Aging, got together uh, a week ago, mm -hmm. and they uh, sent a, a memorandum, basically saying, you know, what we want you to do is stop and consult. You know, we 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 want you to stop the process, go back to the beginning, and then consult with us. You know, on who gets hired, what are these titles? You know, just give us an explanation. Mm -hmm. They wanted to have a, a drawn out, you know, process. Mm -hmm. And uh, Patrice just was not going to have it. You know, it's, we're, we're, she she's got everything in, in in place for this new department, with the exception of this uh, program director for senior services. And they already have that uh, that um, uh, position was put out was a. Uh, um, is now out in the uh, public, and, and I believe there's already three or four people who would like to have that job. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, like I said last week, the uh, Council on Aging, um, you know, said the, a week before they were going, uh, uh, a couple of days before they were going to go have a joint meeting with the select board. Mm -hmm. They said, "Look, we want to we want to make sure the select board understands that we want this stopped." And but, you know, um, if you had gone to any of the select board meetings before. The select board already said that uh, you know they were informed about this. They thought it was a good idea. So and they weren't going to cut the legs out of uh, Patrice Garvin. I mean, especially you know when you have a effective um, well, what I can tell, what I can see is a, an effective uh, town administrator. And um, <clears throat> you know that they didn't have much to go on. They 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 said they had their they they basically had a moral you know. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Well, now I was just going to say that that you know something that we do know is that Brandon Fitz, you know, if he were appointed director of the new department, he has expressed an interest in expanding um, senior programming at the Beach Street Center, which could be a good thing. Right. And um, he's got a great track record in the recreation department, heading that up. I mean, he really turned that that department completely around. It was it was a very sleepy type of uh, department uh, before he came in, and now it's vibrant you know it has its own budget you know it's it's, it's you know and um so so you know there, there are a number of reasons to think that this could be a positive change that's right and i think what 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 you know that joint meeting that um that uh that that occurred this week um it, it turned out where uh, uh the board of selectmen are trying to do the best they can for 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 uh, the COA, and it, it sounds like there's going to be there's a there's a negotiation going on with okay. um, um, with Karen um, and Donlan, who is the chair of the COA, okay. and she will be talking with Catrice and and Elizabeth Dion, the head of uh, the, the chair of the um, select, select board, board. and um, they're you know, it appears that they're going to allow somebody on the COA to to sit in to listen to the interviews, but not with any kind of veto power. So okay. and, you know, they're basically getting, they're basically giving a uh, a bone you know they're giving, they're throwing a bone. All right, so we'll see how things go with that, but um, um, you know there is reason to have hope that that the result will be a good one. Mm -hmm. um,
Let's talk now, Franklin, about um, a change that's coming in, in the budget process this year, as well as town meeting. Well, uh, <clears throat> that's true. We're, we're no longer going to have uh, a town meeting that lasts uh, a month and a half. Okay. What we're going to have is that we're basically eliminating segment B, which was which is the budget segment. Usually, uh, about 10 years ago, I believe, uh, what happened is uh, uh, the town decided to split the uh, town, uh, mm -hmm. town meeting and have a separate budget meeting mm -hmm. at the end of the fiscal year, you know, sometime in, you know, late May, June. Which because, allowed a little bit more time for the budget process. You know, we've, uh, the state numbers would be coming in, you know, for the, for the, for the town and for the schools. Mm -hmm. It made it easier. Uh, it, it had more solid numbers. Um, so, uh, wh so why shorten the process? What's the it, rationale? The rationale comes from the, um, the Collins report, uh, the, the, uh, the, how to, effectively may uh, redo uh, you know uh, the, the town's finances um, and uh, how, how does shorter how does a shorter process um, Im improve things what's what's the thinking there the, the, the thinking is that um, you'll have numbers and you'll be working with them for for six months you know you're you're basically going to have you're basically going to have your numbers in, in, in the last part of the of the calendar year, mm -hmm. you know, October, November. You're going to sit with those numbers and they're going to stay there. Mm -hmm. And you're going to work your way through it. It's no longer going to be something where every two months new numbers come in and, mm -hmm. you know, updates. You know, this is going to be a number that people can settle on. It's going to have to do with a lot of forecasting. It's going to have to do with a lot of uh, number crunching. And... Um, and it, it appears that they're going to try this for the first time. And um, it, it will allow a town meeting to be done over a two-week period. You know, uh, it's going to be... A, a two-week period. Yes, they're it, taking it, a month-and-a-half town meeting process. Right. Um, and Crunching it. There's going to be a lot of midnight... Uh, for, for Belmont, midnight uh, meetings. You know, now, it's, now this is going to happen. Now, isn't there some thinking that this is going to be difficult for for town meeting members? I mean, that, that, well, we're going to hear the cry for a virtual town meeting and people. No, but beyond that, you know, late nights, um, multiple meetings within within a, a span of, of of two weeks. It happens in so many towns in this area. All right. Uh, my, um, I have a, I have, I know somebody who is in Needham, mm -hmm. and they always go like late. You know, and and no one, and and, and they get their they get their uh, their their uh, meeting done uh, effectively. So, what's the reaction been um, of the um, the town moderator? Well, um, uh, the town moderator I mean, it's the last year. You know, he's uh, he's going to be, uh, uh, um, you know. This is Mike Widmer. Mike Widmer, right? and um, you know he he supports it. Uh, it has has anyone checked with um, town meeting members about the proposed um, uh, reconfiguration of town meeting? Well, uh, so far, I mean, this is this has come out a couple uh, about a month ago or uh -huh. even further, and um, I have not heard anybody who really complained about it. You know, and uh, it's just a it's just another way of doing it, and I think people will enjoy it because there were a lot of complaints this year about town meeting going. You know, why do we have this one month off? You know, we would have you know, four meetings in, in April, in May, in May, and then we'd have, you know, a month of vacation, basically. Mm -hmm. Then we'd come back and have to do it again. And people are like, I'm, I'm done with that. <laughs> so it might be a, a, an enjoyable change to, to have something so effectively done. Okay, well, we'll see what happens. But this compresses the schedule in terms of the budget for everyone. You bet. So, so everything that the town is doing, the warrant committee, school committee, and, uh, and and the way the budget is being is being created is 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 now changing also. Um, um, Patrice Garvin and uh, the finance director mm -hmm. um, uh, is are, are are creating a budget now where it's going to be done very early in the year, uh, uh, very early in the fiscal year, um, uh, in October November, where they are going to uh, put they they are going to have through forecasting like mm -hmm. we talked about before a number that uh, both the town and the schools will have to meet. This is no longer a process where we had schools uh, coming to the town saying, this is what we need. Now, are we gonna have, so so with the, the effort to try to nail down numbers earlier, um, 
and, and 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 fundamentally we're talking about nailing down the revenue numbers so that we know how much we can spend uh, is doing this um getting out ahead of the state budget process which doesn't wrap up for months afterward will we know enough about the potential state budget and how the schools and the town might benefit from state assistance that's that's a risk you know if you go th if you suddenly have a deep re recession <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're, you're not going to well, get we, those revenue numbers aren't well, going to hit what your well, forecast are, is going to be. There are mixed signals, but apparently the, the signals are that, that you know, we, we could be cut. approaching We're a, have a rate cut next week. I know a that. A rate cut, um, which hopefully will stave off the, the, mm -hmm. the recession that other signals are suggesting may happen. <laughs> According can, to economists. <laughs> right. But, but, but what also, uh, what that does is that unlike the pass where the schools and i know you were you're were, you were i was a member school, of the school, school committee previously um you know there it was always a complaint by the town side and, and many members on on uh, town meeting that the schools were dictating the budget process um through their asks and you know they would come in with very high or what what they would consider high not a high percentage increase mm -hmm. now there's going to be, basically the schools are and the town are going to agree that this is what the number is going to be. And you have to now come to that number for the schools. It will be, you know, if, if they have to cut, they have to cut. This is not a situation where they can continue to ask for increases. It's, it's a new way of doing it. And it's, and it's also a way that the uh, budget can be, is under control, mm -hmm. is more disciplined. And it's also a way of staving off people who say, because there, an override's coming, you know. Whether well, a, few, a few years down the road, whether that's few, three years, four years, or what, they want to say that we've done our due diligence. We are keeping the budget under a certain percent, under, under a certain percent increase for town and um, uh, schools. You know, we're doing our part, and um, and and that might be also a way of of, of lengthening the override's effectiveness rather than a three-year override. This could be a four, even a five-year override if we do this correct, if, if the town does this correctly. Well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, the town administrator, you have some news about the town administrator. And she, but we've been talking about the town administrator from the first part of this, uh, okay. this broadcast. Well, let's name her Patrice Garvin. Patrice Garvin's in her seventh year, almost her eighth year. She's going on her eighth year. It seems like it was only yesterday she was okay. hired. And and she she's continuing to have a great deal of support by the select board. That's right. Last year, she uh, uh, received a 3% increase in her merit pay. Mm -hmm. And uh, her score at that time, last year, was like a, a 4.8 out of 5. You know, so that's a... That's mm -hmm. an eight, <laughs> but right. uh, so but so this year could she go higher? She did. She okay. went five for five. That's a and as uh, uh, Kelly King, who is the HR director in town, she said that's she just blurted out spectacular, and that is a spectacular uh, uh, number to reach. I mean to go to bat to bat a thousand basically, you know. Okay. And then you had uh, Roy Epstein, who basically said, who said, you know, if I could give you six for five, I would I would do that. She, she just got a glowing review from every member of the uh, select board. And um, um, they said they, 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 they could only effectively give her a 2% increase um, uh, for merit pay, but they are giving her a sweetener. I, I believe it's like uh, if she puts a dollar in to, her, to some kind of fund, mm -hmm. the town will give her $2 up to mm -hmm. a certain level. So it's a way of you know sweetening the deal. Okay. Uh, and so uh, she's now making something around uh, $216,000 a year. So, you know, she's now getting up there uh, to where she's uh, one of the better paid uh, uh, town administrators in this area. Well, actually having looked at town administrator pay um, uh, so for comparable towns, you, you know, it's, I, I think, she, I think that's- It's right in there, but it it's, on, it's now getting to the high, the higher side because there have been changes. Uh, there, there are people who have left it. Uh, All right. Positions. Okay, so um, more town news. Uh, the town has got a uh, a re-upping of a certain bond rating. Do you want to talk about that? That's right. Uh, Belmont is one of the few towns in the state that have a AAA bond rating. Now, if you know anything about bonds, or you know, AAA is the is the top rate that you can have. 
Um, uh, this is something that uh, uh, our former treasurer, Floyd Carmen, used to be very proud of. But let me ask you, Franklin, why is this important? Because so many, so Bar many towns... Borrowing, borrowing okay, money, okay. you know. So the town always has to borrow money, you know. We're, we're, you know, we, we don't have the money on hand. You know, we, we have to wait till all the taxes come in, you know, at yep. the end of the year. So we do have to borrow money. Okay. This gives us the best rate. You know, and, and if we're doing any kind of capital um, um, improvements. Ca improvements, you know, which is we're talking about the, you know, we're not talking about um, uh, the rink or the library because those have been, you know, the debt exclusion. They, they know, already benefited from the previous AAA bond right. rating. What we're talking about is the Chenery roof. Yeah. And that's going to be very expensive. So if when we do go out for that money, that money will be at, a, at the lowest rate. And, you know, and we're seeing... We're going to be seeing a, a rate cut, um, knock on wood, a yeah. rate cut for the federal funds rate. Although so it's, these it's rates, being debated how much. Uh, yeah, it's going from, uh, uh, what is it, 250 basis points or 500 basis points or 50 basis points or what? It's from a half percent to a quarter percent. But still, anything that's going downward from the last, you know, last cut um, is, is a good news. So yeah. if, if there's going to be time to uh, borrow money, now's the time. All right. Okay. So more town news. Uh, town day is coming up. What can you say about that, Frank? It's always fun. Uh, and, I believe that there's going to be some uh, elected officials who are go going to be uh, participating in the dunk tank. Okay. Uh, so that will be fun. It's always a great time. You know, okay. Belmont Center is opened up and, uh, um, you know, it's a, a great way for the restaurants to, uh, you know, to have their food out in the street and um, people, um, it's a, it's a lot of fun. A lot of uh, uh, preteens and teens like to uh, <laughs> go crazy. <laughs> and the, the Belmont Media Center will be out there with a the booth. That's right. And they're with their cameras. And so if they come up to you and say, hey, say something cool about the town day, please, please participate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so that's coming up this Sunday, uh, September 15th. That's right. All right. So that's it. Um, and... Thank you, Franklin. Um, as always, you can find more of Franklin's reporting at belmontonian.com. And be sure to tune in next time. We'll see you then.